I've been trying to find a pair of jeans. Every pair I tried on had those wide legs. I hate those. They make me look so frumpy. Kelly, I'm trying to talk to you. I'm sorry you're over 50. I, I don't acknowledge people that are over 50. I mean, nobody else does. But I do understand what you're saying about the jeans because I prefer the wide leg jeans. I don't really like those skinny jeans. I think those are kind of unflattering to those of us who don't have very good legs. So I understand, and if you want me to, I can go with you to find... Jenny. Jenny. Oh, yeah. How many of you feel this way? You walk into a store in the mall. Nobody acknowledges you. You go into a restaurant. No. Where do they seat you? Mm -hmm. Remember that time we were in New York? They marched us right past the beautiful patio area, mm -hmm. past several empty tables up near the front. They were all empty. Where? In the back. Okay. Yep. Why did they seat us in the back? I'm quite sure it's because of our peg legs, our humpbacks, and the huge warts on our faces <laughs> because we were going to turn away customers at some point. But what did we do? We spoke to the hostess yeah. and said, please put us up in the front. That was our vacation. And we wanted to see it. You yes. Have to. If you're going to be relevant, you have to ask for what you want. But so many of our friends experience the same problem. Yes. So what do we do? How do we get the treatment we deserve? We advocate for ourselves. Yeah. We ask for what we want. Mm -hmm. And like we did, ask the hostess or the server to move us where we want to sit. And as I recall, we had a long lunch there and spent a lot of money. And left a big, fat tip. Because women in their 50s are more likely to tip well. We know what it's like. I mean, I've served before. We've been through the ranks. We know, and we respect it. And we want to be taken care of, so we're going to take care of the server. Absolutely. This has happened multiple times when we go out. Yeah, and it usually happens when there's two or three of us going out just to get together for drinks and appetizers or a meal. And we are usually, if not always, seated in the back. What? And it's up to us to get what we want. I have actually looked at a hostess or a server straight in the eye and said, if you take care of me, I'll make sure we take care of you. You have to. And it usually works. Yeah. But I hate that we have to ask for it. Right. Most of the time, these are young ladies. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, look at me. I'm you in 30 years. <laughs> you need to be taking care of me. Because at some point, someone's going to need to be taking care of you. You have to. Nobody's going to do it for you. And it's not just the restaurants. Go to the doctor's office. I can tell, speaking to my husband about his appointments and then telling him about mine, that we're treated differently. How many times has a doctor said to you? You're not getting any younger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that's to be expected at your age. But we have to advocate with our health care the way we have to advocate for everything else. I know an 89-year-old woman who happens to be my mother-in-law. She still gets preventative dental checkups and has any kind of surgical procedure or medical procedure that she needs at her age. You have to. And I like that because that's showing hope. That's that, that is showing that we want to take care of ourselves. We see a long life for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are taking charge of our own health care. How about when you go shopping? First of all, you walk into the mall, go into a store, and if there are younger girls in there, they're getting all of the attention. Yeah, the sales clerk will push you aside to get to the 20-somethings. Absolutely, and here's the deal with the 20-somethings. Their parents who are our age are the ones paying for their clothes and we're paying for our clothes. So I don't understand why they don't come to us first. We're the ones that are actually gonna be cutting the check. <laughs> the problem is we have to find something to cut the check for because when we walk in, all I see are things that are available for my 20-year-old daughters. I'm not wearing those short shorts. No. The bare midriff no. tops, the puffy sleeves. And that's as a favor to all of you. That's why we're not wearing those things. Oh. oh. <laughs> Are we a significant market? Apparently not. Do they even care? Uh, no. I have to think we are a significant market. This all circles back to the notion of relevancy that we've been talking about. What does it take for women over 50 
to be relevant? I think the answer is we have to stand up for ourselves, mm -hmm. but we have to do this in front of those who are coming behind us. We've got to teach the younger women in our lives to be respectful for the women with more wisdom. But to also experience. advocate for themselves too. Right. But advocate for us as well because they are us in 30 years. Yeah. We have something to teach the young women in our lives. Yes. And they may have something to teach us. They do. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Let's be real. Yes, they do. We're doing all the teaching. They're teaching me how to do Instagram. Oh, that's true. I'm I just saying. Do that. I'm just saying. We have something to say. We have life experiences. We have relevance. And we need to use that relevance and take our place in the market. But we have to ask for it. We have to work on being relevant every single day. If we don't, we're in danger of becoming obsolete. We got to keep up. And you can't just say, I'm too old to learn that. I'm too old to do that. We you can't do, do that. what it takes to remain relevant. If it means learning a new, I'm just speaking to myself, social media app like Instagram and TikTok, whatever. <laughs> we got to do it. We, we got to do it. be relevant. Have to. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're over 50 and we are not going peacefully into the night. 